Food insecurity existed before the pandemic. The pandemic really just exacerbated the problem and shined a spotlight on this chronic issue that had been plaguing our country for decades. In the United States, food insecurity isn't caused by a lack of food, but by a lack of access to food. It affected one in four households in 2019, and the COVID-19 pandemic only exacerbated the situation. With food banks pushed to their limits, it's clear that traditional methods aren't enough, and we need innovative ideas to tackle this pervasive issue. Not Impossible Labs is an incubator that uses design and technology to create solutions to real-world problems. We saw at the essentially the dawn of the pandemic, March, April 2020, so we saw school closures taking place and we said, okay, this is not good. There's a lot of kids who are at risk communities who are gonna lose their free or reduced meals. And that was kind of one of our fundamental motivations. We have plenty of food in this country, but we just don't have the ability to connect the food, the sources of food, to the people who need the food. It's a supply chain issue. It's an operational issue. It's a logistics issue. We went back into the lab and we started to think about this and brainstorm it and we ended up interviewing a group down the street from us called Safe Place for Youth and we sat down with the homeless kids, right? So we went for a population that really could relate to this and we asked them, you know, what is it that you desire most? What is it that you need most in life? And we expected answers like food, clothing, water, shelter and they answered a cell phone a cell phone. It caught us off guard, but what we realized after taking that back and starting to study it is that, first of all, 96% of the people in this country, they have a cell phone. Whether you live in a penthouse or sleep in your car, you have a cell phone. Maybe that's how we'll be able to create a solution so that people can get food that is close to them, that it's healthy, it gives them a way to, to be dignified in how they claim their food so they're not forced to stand in a line and be identified as someone who is either poor or food insecure. How can we use that phone as that point? And Postmates and Uber Eats and food delivery platforms like that, they already have every restaurant in this country that are part of their system. So now our distribution sites, as opposed to being just one here and one there and one in downtown and one on the west side, now we've got this labyrinth, all of these different nodes of distribution. So we said, okay, great. Now we've got our supply box checked. Now how do we get to the demand? So then we started to reach out to community-based organizations like the YMCA and the Boys and Girls Club to healthcare organizations like St. John's or Providence and even organizations like the VA. Those organizations define the eligibility parameters and make this benefit available to those in their community that meet those parameters. Once they're deemed eligible, then we enroll them onto our text message service and they're able to start ordering meals. Text the word hungry, it then starts a series of text prompts. We manually geolocate you and we now offer a list of up to 10 different restaurants or grocery stores. You then choose your menu option, you're given a confirmation number, and you walk in to either the restaurant or the grocery store and claim your food. The meals are prepaid for via the organizations the person has accessed Bento through. They text, they don't have to download an app. They get to walk into a restaurant and pick up a meal. And the restaurant, an order comes in just like any other order. The restaurant gets paid for it. They make the order and they stick it to the side for the person to walk in. No behavior changes have had to happen. And that's why this thing has taken off the way that it has. Bento is operating across the United States in nine cities today. One of the biggest challenges that we have when we are rolling this out and scaling the solution is educating the organizations that serve at-risk communities that Bento is not just an available service that they can use and deploy, but it's a more effective solution than relying on government food assistance and food banks in local communities. It's one thing to eliminate food insecurity from somebody's world. It's another thing to engage them in the next step now that they're not worried about where their next meal is coming from. What can we do so that they take those next steps, whether that's job training, whether that's behavioral health services, whether that's primary care healthcare screenings. Now we're dealing with massive societal issues and we're using food as that tip of the arrow to build the trust with that person and then be able to expand into other aspects of need within their lives.